All right, moving on to the last topic of this class, which is active insufficiency and passive insufficiency. Uh, it's a very important concept when you're talking about the biomechanics and we're talking about covering all the basics in the musculoskeletal examination. Now, this is an important concept in terms of uh, questions, in terms of examination, and sometimes in terms of the interventions also. So let's look at the definitions of active and passive insufficiency. There are a few things that you should always remember that uh, this particular concept is usually is actually only used in the two joint muscles. You know how they have uh, one joint muscle and two joint muscles, for example, the wrist extensors, the common extensors originate from the forearm and it helps with the extension at the wrist and extension at the fingers. And the same way when the common flexors of the four of uh, common flexors uh, of the wrist originates from the medial epicondyle, helps the patient to perform wrist flexion and the finger flexion. All right, think about more uh, uh, two joint muscles. Uh, think about gastrocnemius. Gastrocnemius is a plantar flexor and also helps in the knee flexion, right? Think about quadriceps, which is a two joint muscle, which helps in um, knee extension and the hip flexion. Think about hamstrings muscles, which is two joint muscle, which helps in knee flexion and hip extension. Think about biceps, which helps at the shoulder and at the elbow. At the shoulder, it helps in shoulder flexion, and at the elbow, it helps in um, elbow flexion and supination, right? So when you talk about active and passive insufficiency, it is only applicable for the two joint muscles. By definition, active insufficiency means that inability to contract the muscle at both the joints simultaneously at the same time. Which means if I'm trying to flex my wrist and if I try to flex my fingers and I'm unable to make a good grip because of the active insufficiency of the common flexors at the wrist and hand, right? Passive insufficiency means inability to stretch the muscles at both the joints simultaneously. For example, when you're trying to perform flexion, you're basically doing actively and you are flexing both the, um, the, the muscles at both the joints. But when you try to do extension and try to open the fingers, the same muscles the wrist flexor muscles are being stretched at both the joints, the fingers and at the wrist joint. Now the range of motion will be limited due to the passive insufficiency. If I try to flex my fingers and then extend my wrist, I will have more range of motion than I extend my fingers. All right, so again, active insufficiency means a muscle has the insufficiency to contract at two joints simultaneously. And passive insufficiency means a muscle is insufficient to stretch simultaneously at both the joints. The key word in this particular concept is contracting or stretching at two joints at the same time. All right, let's try to solve a question. I'll give you 60 seconds to solve this question. So take your time and answer your questions in your notebooks or in the chat. All right, um, 10 more seconds, and then we'll talk about the answer. <laughs> 
Perfect. Let's read the question together. When asked from a patient to perform knee flexion in prone position, the patient stopped at 90 degrees of deflection. Which of the following is true? Option A, active insufficiency of the hamstrings. Option B, passive insufficiency of the hamstrings. Option C, active insufficiency of the quadriceps. And option D, passive insufficiency of the quadriceps. Now, if you remember the rule that active and passive insufficiency is only applicable to the two joint muscle. So in the options, all options have two joint muscles, right? The movement that you're trying to perform is knee flexion and you're trying to perform it actively and the patient stopped at 90 degrees. Now think about the muscle which is responsible for the knee flexion. Is it quadriceps or is it hamstrings? Well, it's hamstrings, right? So the answer could be some, something between A and B. Right now, are you able? Are you trying to contract the hamstring muscle at two joints? I don't think so because patient is prone, and patient is only trying to perform knee flexion. The question does not mention anything about contracting the muscle at the hip joint, which is why I'm not going to assume that the muscle is being contracted at two joints actively. Which is why I'm going to. Uh, go with the active insufficiency of the hamstrings, all right? Which means that the uh, patient has the inability to perform knee flexion actively up beyond 90 degrees. That means there may be some weakness of the hamstrings when the patient is not trying, when, when the patient is not able to perform the knee flexion at the knee joint while the hip is extended neutral. All right, now we are doing a contraction of the movement. That's why the answer is active insufficiency. If we were trying to stretch something, then the answer would have been something about the quadriceps and we could have other things given in the question. But this is pretty simple. Don't try to confuse it with the passive and active, mostly uh, active insufficiency questions where you're trying to do it by yourself and the patient stopped at particular motion. Now let's look at uh, another scenario, something like this, but a different joint. So let's try a Vinet type question on the same concept and see how it goes. So go ahead and take two more minutes to solve this question. Now, once we have the answer, we'll try to connect the dots with the whole scenario. All right, 30 more seconds. I don't want you to rush, but uh, we want you to try to solve the questions in the time limit so that you are habitual to solve the questions under the time given in the exam. So go ahead and lock your final answers so that we can talk about in details. All right, perfect. Let's read the question together. The question says, physiotherapist is assessing a patient by doing passive range of motion in the bilateral upper extremity. On the right side, the therapist noticed that the shoulder and elbow range of motion is reduced. Now question is, while performing the passive range of movement, the physio noticed that the shoulder extension is more with the elbow flexion versus elbow in extension. 
what could be the possible reason for the variation in the range of motion. Options are option A, passive insufficiency of the biceps, option B, active insufficiency of the biceps, option C, active insufficiency of the anterior deltoid, and option D, passive insufficiency of the anterior deltoid. If you remember the rule, the passive and active insufficiency is only applicable for the two joint muscle, which means anterior deltoid cannot be considered in this particular concept because deltoid is one joint muscle. It only helps at the shoulder joint, but not at any other joint. So active and passive insufficiency is not applicable for one joint muscle. So option D and option C are really not the right answers for this particular question. Now let's see what's happening in option A and B. Option A says uh, passive insufficiency in the biceps and option B active insufficiency of the biceps. Let's read the question one more time. The therapist is trying to perform passive range of motion and notice that the shoulder extension is more with the elbow flexion versus elbow in extension. What could be the possible reason for the variation in the range of motion? Let me tell you the right answer. The right answer to this question is option A, the passive insufficiency of the biceps. How do you know if it's passive insufficiency? Now you see, when you're trying to so, so the extension, the shoulder extension is more with elbow flexion versus elbow in extension. So what happens is when you extended the elbow and when you extended the shoulder, you basically stretched biceps at the elbow and at the shoulder at the same time. Remember when you're stretching a two joint muscle, we're talking about the passive insufficiency of the biceps. What's the function of biceps? It helps in elbow flexion and it helps in shoulder flexion. Now, when you do shoulder extension, you're stretching two different muscles, anterior deltoid and the biceps. But when you extend your, your elbow, you're stretching the biceps on both the joints. All right. So when you're performing shoulder extension in the elbow extension, the range of motion is lesser. But the moment when you flex your shoulder uh, for your elbow, you will notice more shoulder extension. This is passive insufficiency of the biceps. So the biceps, when it was stretched on both the joints, was restricting the shoulder extension. But the moment you flex your elbow, the shoulder was, now the biceps is isolated. The biceps is eliminated from the picture because you shortened it at one joint. Now the only muscle which is being stretched is anterior deltoid, which is why you have more shoulder extension with elbow flexion. So that is why um, the answer to this question is going to be option A. Now we talked about how to isolate, how to find out if the two joint muscle was restricting the motion or a single joint muscle was restricting the motion. The best way to find out if it's the two joint muscle or the single joint is you contract the two joint muscle. And if the range of motion increases, that means the the shortened, the reduced range of motion, the restriction in the range of motion was caused by the two joint muscle. But now you eliminated it by contracting it. The only muscle which is stretching is your single joint muscle. All right, how about I give you an assignment? How about you guys tell me uh, hamstrings muscle in the knee joint, how to eliminate or how to isolate the hamstring muscles when you're trying to perform the straight leg raise, right? When you perform straight leg raise, your hamstring gets stretched at the knee joint and at the hip joint when you're trying to do hip flexion. So how you tell me in the comment section or in the telegram group that we have, how does hamstrings can be isolated when performing the straight leg raise? All right, perfect. Let's move on to the next question. The next question says, in order to improve the shoulder extension, which of the following is false? Is it posterior roll? Is it anterior slide? Is it posterior slide or is it supine on elbows? I think we talked about it in the lecture before that in order to improve the shoulder extension, you want to give anterior glide. So which means when you perform shoulder extension, your humerus, the head of the humerus, it slides forward, it slides anteriorly and it rolls posteriorly. If you look at the question, it's asked, what is false? 
posterior roll is a normal physiological orthogonomatic movement happens in the joint during the shoulder extension, which is why this option is wrong because posterior roll really happens. But what we are trying to find is what is false. Anterior slide. This is again a wrong answer because that's what happens in the shoulder extension. The humerus slides anteriorly and rolls posteriorly. That's why this is wrong because we are trying to find something which is false. Posterior slide and next option is supine on elbows. If you remember the lecture, we talked about supine on elbows when the shoulders are extended and you're basically pushing the humeral head forward in anterior direction, which is why supine on elbows is basically used to improve shoulder extension. That's why this is a wrong answer because we are trying to find something false. There's only false option which is left in the options is posterior slide because the posterior slide happens with shoulder flexion. When you're trying to perform shoulder flexion, the slide in the joint on the humeral head happens posteriorly. This is why option C is going to be the right answer for this question. Right? All right, I'm going to repeat some things for you guys about the active and passive insufficiency. So active insufficiency is something where we have inability to contract the muscle simultaneously at both the joints. When you're trying actively, you basically have less, less strength in the muscle when you're trying to perform active movement together on two joints. And passive insufficiency is when you have inability to stretch the muscle at the two joints simultaneously. All right, if you remember your assignment, you tell me how in the knee joint, the hamstring muscles, passive insufficiency, all right? And how do you isolate the hamstrings? How do you know if the straight leg raise is restricted either by gluteus maximus or hamstrings muscle? All right, you can email me your answer at ravneet at pceff.com and maybe we can have a chat about this particular concept. All right, very good. So if you have any questions, do let me know. Don't hesitate to talk to me and I will catch up in the next class. Thank you.